know my name is Scott Aaron Rogers, and this is the Who's Left podcast, a podcast about Indiana politics, history, and culture from an unapologetically leftist perspective. I am joined today by my good friend, Tom LeVon. Tom, say hi to the people. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom LeVon. Uh, you might also know me from the internet as Linear Effect. Um, I used to, used to in quotation marks, uh, it definitely exists in an ambiguous Schrodinger's YouTube channel kind of way, a linear radio. Uh, <laughs> we were sort of a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A variety show. Uh, so yeah, that's where I I come from. We used to kind of do some some stuff like this at the very beginning, but it never panned out. <laughs> um, kind of following up on what we talked about in the pre-show, uh, we had a host. Uh, you you know him as PJ. Uh, oh, he PJ. he was very much very much hung up on trying to get something like this absolutely perfect so we didn't produce a lot of it and it also wasn't received very well because a lot of our other stuff is like very nerd oriented video gamey stuff but he always was trying to get it so perfect and he asked me uh this is this anecdote i was talking about he, he asked me today he's like what what are you guys going to talk about and he's like i go well uh, he just told me, like, why Indiana sucks, and that was it. And he's like, what? I'm like, what do you mean, what? Like, what do we else do? We, like, <laughs> and then you come in here with a bunch of notes. I was like, well, I guess I was wrong about how kind of freeballing we were doing this. But, hey, listen, I, it's, you don't, you know, there's no exact science to this, but he definitely tried to do that. So, we're we're, we're, <laughs> we're citizen journalists here, Tom. We, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good way of putting I it. I didn't go to J school. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just a guy, and we're, uh, you know, we're going for it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I want to uh, set the table here for our listeners today before we go on this here uh, journey. Uh, I want to, uh, sort of zoom out, you know, get the, the, the 50,000 foot Chinese surveillance balloon view of, uh... Hot topical. <laughs> yeah, get the... uh, we just dated, get the... The... Scott, Scott, that's what's referred to as dating the episode. N- no one will get this in two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I think the Chinese surveillance balloon is funny enough that for a few years, people will be like, ah, yeah, you remember that? Yeah, that's fun. It's going to wind up in the year in review 2023, and they're going to be like, hey, you remember when that Chinese surveillance balloon was a thing? <laughs> like, those, those were the days when that's all we had to worry yeah. about. I mean, listen, yeah. it's it's 2023, and we're still talking about how they murdered that goddamn gorilla in 2016 and ch- altered the timeline. You know what I mean? It really did all go to shit right around then, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, zoom it out. Zoom it out. Well, 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 well that, no, <laughs> that, that brings us to a point, because we're going to zoom out, and then we're going to zoom back in by the end of the show, and we're going to come back to the part where Harambe dies. And... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the that is the touchstone at the end of the zoom out. That's great. Yeah, that is that's how we're gonna land this plane. So um no, seriously, zooming out. So I want to talk about um like this this long thread of uh American history and like why we're in this this moment that we're in now and why everything seems so fucked up and it I promise it has nothing to do with Harambe. As far as I can tell. It didn't help. It, <laughs> it certainly, certainly did help. not help. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I listened to uh, Tom Hartman a lot. And Tom Hartman is like the, the godfather of progressive radio. And um, one thing he kind of keeps coming back to again and again and again is this uh, book by, uh, what is that? William Strauss and Neil Howe. It's called The Fourth Turning, originally released in 1997. Good year. That's the year I graduated from high school. Uh, and on a literary note, just a great name, honestly. that's a, That has some fun uh, language to it. Right, right? So, the, like, the basic concept is that... Um, 
civilization sort of repeats itself in these like 80 year cycles um you know if you go back to the revolution the american revolution that's sort of the beginning of one of these cycles and 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 you know give or take 80 years later you got the civil war give or take another year's 80 you know 80 years later you got the depression and world war ii and give or take another 80 years from that we are here now um and so there's this there's this this long sort of thread that, that goes back and it, it, it I'm sure it goes back further than that if you want to trace the you know the revolutionary generation 80 years prior it, i have actually not read this book <laughs> the, the, the core concept though has been explained to you <laughs> it has been explained well and if if tom hartman says it's good it's good right yeah but uh so the the, the reason for this like 80 year number is that is sort of your uh average human lifespan right right um yeah you know, like an old person. Like, you know, an average good human life is 80 years, you know? Yeah, some are going to come in higher, some are going to come in lower. Especially but, you know. if you extrapolate that out to people of means, the older people who are 80, especially in the past, have been the people who maybe had a little bit more power and ability to make it to 80 years and still shaping things at that point in their life. Yeah, yeah, the average... Uh child coal miner was probably not living to eight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <Back> <laughs> oh, well, no, but seriously. Um, so, you have these cycles, and each one corresponds to about uh, a human life, and there's this, this uh, great quote. It's from... Line, Arnold Toynbee. <laughs> and something to, something to the effect of... I would have forgotten uh, that name, too. I wrote it down. When <laughs> the... When the last man who remembers the last great war dies, the next great war becomes inevitable. Shit, that's a fucking banger quote right there, as the kids it really would say. Is. It really is. <laughs> um, because we're in that place now. You know... Uh, my grandparents' generation that lived through the Depression and fought World War II, there's like four of them left. Yeah. But if you want to rewind here, um, within each 80 year cycle, you've got this, four, you've got four generations, essentially. And. Each generation after this major turning, there will be this, like, uh, halo effect. You know, there will be this this high and um, this ebb and flow to it, prosperity. It, it, exactly. So, you know, you're, you're on the you're on the, the upswing now. And like, you, you know, you, there's been this major turn. And now things are awesome. Or they are how they are. Turnings don't always turn out great, depending on which side you're on. Yeah. There, there's some... Uh, the, the names and players change, but sort of the the play is still the same. It still follows, it's, like, the same structure. It, it, it really does. And, um... It, it's it, like, it oh, is. you it's had like... a revolutionary war? Well, you won. But the people who were in charge the last uh, cycle are not ha happy now. Yes, yes, exactly. And so it takes, like, these four generations to kind of rebuild things. Uh, so if you want to zoom into, like, kind of our current World War II till now turning, you've got that, like, 20-year after World War II, this is the boomers, and this is where all, they're all born. You got this high where America is, like, the top of the world. 
Uh, you know, we, yeah, we got wow. Oh, we won World War Two. You know, back to back World War champs. <laughs> back to back World War champs. And you know, we're we, we've basically inherited the British Empire because they've you know been completely destroyed during World War Two. I, I don't know if we necessarily inherited it, but we've kind of definitely broke it up and then we're like hey you know it'd be real fun is if we kind of just uh, just nommed up some of that stuff uh we well we can get into a whole episode oh, of, like, yeah. post world <laughs> war ii like the bretton woods order and the imf and the 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 world economic forum and and and, and how like you know all the, the 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 global south countries gained their nominal independence after world war ii but yeah, they it's were, it's interesting you know, to look put back into economic at economic debt. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird to see like how people don't understand how different the United States sort of ideologically was before World War II. Like we're still we're still in that effect of World War II where it's like the American exceptionalism type uh, situation is still happening. Where that's like a you know it was very controversial to join world war ii up until the point japan bombed Pearl harbor that was the whole thing and now oh, people are absolutely. like and now people the, the the people who do the same jobs that their like grandfathers did at that time are like yeah let's fucking world police this shit and it's like we were not like always super about that you know that right like well, that's not funny, how we funny were thing. You, you had in, in the late 30s this this big America First movement, like, uh, sound familiar? Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> yeah. you know God. that's that's the Trump Marjorie Marjorie Taylor Greene Matt Gates line now. Uh, you know the whole the in in in, in Britain you got uh, Brexit and. There, there was a Britain First party that was campaigning for yeah. Brexit before it was a thing. Um, but we will come back to America First, actually, because um, they are relevant again, and we're going to get to them. Uh, ref- refresh my understanding of this. Was America First a pro, let's get into this war, or a isolationist thing where they it's like america were, first even you stay out of this they were isolationists this is your Which is, um charles Lindbergh, uh henry ford um raging pro nazi anti-semites right they're oh, like oh that's why they that's why they were they were well, like let's not get into this exactly because you know from the time Hitler took party uh, power in uh yeah 33 and sort of consolidated the german state behind him and you know it wasn't all you know it wasn't like zero to gas chambers overnight it was yeah uh, the, the 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 slow build and um it, you know by 38 is you know, taking over parts of Czechoslovakia and, and uh, uh, annexing Austria. And, yeah, it's and, like he so, he was he was on the cover of Time magazine for an actual reason. Is for a while it from the outside it looked like he was actually doing good. It wasn't the it wasn't twenty first century. We didn't have the news that we had. There were all you know. Uh, it's how dictators. Uh, dictators or despots or whatever you want to call them work when it's like information control is a thing but it's like well the germans seem happy it's like well yeah he's carving up like a third of them to sort of bo- bolster that and i'm speaking in high paraphrases there so <laughs> well i mean no no it's absolutely right what what's the what's the the, the phrase you hear some are, uh, sometimes like a third of the population wanted to kill uh, another third of the population, and then the other third of the population sort of stood by and watched. Yeah, yeah. That's that's sort of where I'm drawing some of those numbers from. Uh, Don't quote me on those numbers, uh, but it's the the idea is there, where, like... uh, Yes. There's just a, a signal fidelity of what somebody could do at that time was, like, uh, not not the best. It, how could it be? Well, yeah, I mean, at that point, 
we we weren't as uh, involved in the information distribution era as we are now. Yeah, you know when things are instant and um and and like it was sort of a new concept that like. Um, I don't know that a war wasn't like a wars and things like that could be a little bit more were always a, a little bit more lengthy of an affair. We were just getting into like, oh, we could deploy a, a whole army over there in a week and they could do that mm. to us. Mm-hmm. Like that yeah, type like of thing planes, was so it's radio and television. That stuff yeah, was like, all all new then. Yeah, it was there was a a gathering like, you know, that stuff also was a evolving thing and to have uh, the conceptualization at the time to be allocating those sort of advancements in your understanding of other countries was different and now if we look if we you know swing the camera back now that's like what america is like one of our primary defense strategies is is like we want to know what every other country is doing like i'm not oh, being like this I'm, is I'm hyperbole time. We are absolutely gonna come back <laughs> right here when we when when we end. But no, you're 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 absolutely right. Um, it's it's like there's parallels and they sort of repeat themselves every so often. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you you know America coming off of World War Two, you've got this high and. It, like Europe's destroyed. Okay, they they're gonna spend Oof. the next twenty years just rebuilding. You know, yeah. Japan is destroyed. They're gonna and, and, and you know China and a lot of these is places, destroyed. A lot of these places uh, also are learning different lessons from that than we did. Uh, certainly, certainly. Um, I, I think there's a culture, some cultural shockwaves felt differently uh, depending on where you were on the map. It's like. The winners rewrite history, and uh, everybody and the else. And sort of, the, sort of... the sort of kind of okay winners have a different rewrite of that history. You know, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> we look at Europe now. We look at Europe now, and they're not really the same colonizers they used to be. Uh, there's definitely some whole like uh, um, prejudices left over from that for sure. But uh, as I political uh um ideological methodology scale they're like hey how about we just try to make things good and i'm using that like as a real that's like a real generalization i'm saying there because uh like you said this is leftist podcast some of these european like countries <laughs> yeah yeah white good, people good. good for them yeah we'll we'll, yeah, we'll, it, it, we'll come back for you we promise <laughs> well like I, I guess that's what I mean and say, like, you know, we definitely took this capitalistic route uh, in a, a lot harder way than some of our European allies that maybe didn't, didn't, mm, mm-hmm. couldn't prosper after this war could. So we're over here with no, you know, no uh, uh, universal health care for anything. And it's like these other countries that had like sort of thousands hundreds of years of history and cultural backing yeah they got their shit rocked like you know uh france and the uk got bombed to shit but they Mm -hmm. recovered because they have the cultural identity to do so and when they come back they're like and, and a lot of that sweet sweet american cash yeah, yeah, that too, and like I, not to uh, exclude Norway and uh, Finland, like these these sort of Scandinavian states that definitely have real leftist uh, sort of health stuff like that, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, yeah, like a like, like a public real social safety net. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just, it's like just, it's like some of these places can, got can invaded just and a small piece of socialism. Yeah, like they got they got their shit rocked, you know what I mean? And it's like what do you do to rebuild properly? You have to build that social safety net because your people some of their cities don't exist anymore. Whereas the United States is like, well, we lost eight ships in that initial thing and that's really about as bad as it got over here. <laughs> I mean, not to minimize. I mean, we lost a crap ton of dudes, but uh um, Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it I'm speaking in a uh, sort of uh 
Uh, infrastructure, <laughs> infrastructure kind of way. Y- yes, exactly. Really it didn't sort touch of the homeland. Yeah, and that um, sort of I think shapes uh, things a certain way. I keep interrupting you. Let's go. Let's do this. No, Where no, are no, we? no. You're good. This is qu- <laughs> questions are good. We want questions. So no, we 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 come back to like when the when the boomers are born here. And, you know, America's riding this high after the war and, you know, we're, 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 we're building the suburbs and we're building the interstate. And all. We're also rebuilding Europe and like, you know, getting interest on that. And we're rebuilding Japan yeah. and getting interest on that. And, you, know, you know, like we, 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 we got a head start. Like, uh, uh, we're, we're going to bomb you into oblivion and go. <laughs> So, you, you know, you get to this point, and, and about 20 years later, you get to, like, the mid-60s, and then you've got the civil rights movement, and, like, not that it hasn't been percolating for, oh, I don't know, the last 250 years. Yeah. But, you, you, you know, you get yeah, to that, the that type of, and, and That type of movement doesn't come out of nowhere. Yeah, and, and, and you sort of, like, achieve critical mass, and and shit actually gets done. And and and, and sort this is this uh awakening period. Uh this is the, the second generation after the turning. Right? You have this uh awakening and rebelling. And so you see for a lot of you know the next several years, um you know, you got your civil rights movement. You have all the social unrest around that. Uh, you've got, you know, riots in, 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 in several American cities uh, in, you know, 1967, 68. Uh, you, you've got uh, the, the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in 68 and all the, the stuff around that. You got, you know, the Kennedys being assassinated. You got Martin Luther King. You got... Vietnam and Nixon and uh, yeah, just all the sort of social unrest of of that period, and that is a normal, you know, cycle in this turning. He goes up. People are like, oh, "Hey, hey, wait a second! This this up is great, but mm, it could be better." <laughs> You know, maybe maybe while we're doing this up, we could let these black folks have some up. <laughs> we could maybe let some immigrants in from other countries. They can get in on some of this up. And so you have, you know, the Civil Rights, you know, Act. You got the Voting Rights Act. You got the, uh, you know, immigration reform in 1965. And, and like, we finally really become... Like this open democratic society that we've been pretending we were the whole time. Yeah. Um. Well, it turns out white people don't like that so much. <laughs> Not all of uh, us, but a uh, significant number. And so you've got the backlash to that uh, awakening and rebelling. And and so like you know in response to the civil rights movement and then like a, especially the the student movement in the late sixties, you get a lot of your uh, rich alumni of those schools from previous generation are like, hey, what what is this? There's unrest at my alma mater. <laughs> and and they're and they're pissed, you know. So they you know they threaten to cut funding and they, and 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 they do and they do. Uh, th- this is kind of the height of public higher education in this country, and and you know it's been being whittled back ever since. Mm-hmm. And 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 so you get to this you know this middle of this cycle in the in the the mid seventies, and you got. Uh, Watergate and all the the disillusion that comes from around that, like people yeah. really lose uh, faith in government. Uh, you got you know your oil 
embargo and your oil crisis, the energy crisis of the 70s, and inflation and stagflation and and and, and this this just decade of turmoil. Um, un, un, until you reach your unraveling stage. So, you've got sort of like peak New Deal era in the 70s. Like, like look at Nixon and the things he campaigned on and ran on, even the things he did in office... Like, he was a conservative Republican in that era, but a conservative Republican in the New Deal era is further to the left than a centrist Democrat now. You yeah. know, like, Nixon was further left than Obama. Prove me wrong. Yeah, in a, yeah, in a purely, like, uh, policy-type uh, scale. I would think, yeah. at least in that way. I, I, you know, I... Dick Personally, I can't the speak. EPA. Yeah. <laughs> he implemented price controls. Can you imagine Joe Biden going out there now and trying to combat inflation with price controls? Um, they call him a socialist. Yeah, I oh, mean, wait, one day he might, <laughs> he might just, like, yeah, we're, we're, li we're listen, listen, I'm going to take a quick, quick side note. We all have been hoping for Dark Brandon this entire time. It could happen. He's an old man. He could do it. He doesn't he doesn't need to care about whatever. He could one day just be like, I'm Dark Brandon now. I, I you, you know what? I, I I agree <laughs> because really what what are they gonna do? Kill him? He's had a good run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, what are they don't gonna do? Beat your FBI. ass? You didn't you didn't hear that. Um <laughs> But yeah, you know, you get you get you get to a certain point in life. You've had some wins. Your your legacy's set. What are they gonna do? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm still not sure Uncle Joe's the guy for this moment. But uh, you know, we can, we can no, save absolutely that for not. No, he's episodes. just he's just the old man that we could pick. Yeah, so these are my old white seventy plus year old guys. <laughs> uh, like, where was Greg Popovich? I wanted Greg Popovich. It, it, it it makes everything so uncomfortable when you hear someone talking crap about um, Joe Biden, and you have to like kind of look at them and guess which way they're coming at it from. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, how how comfortable am I going to be uh, in the next five minutes here? <laughs> well, I could I could you know we could spin off a whole other episode talking about like the. The, the post-left and, like, the post-tankies and how they're, you know, purporting to be coming at Biden from the left, but in fact they're really coming at him from the right. Um, yeah. But that, yeah, like I said, that's a, that's a whole other issue. Um, but we, we sort of got to, you know, the end of the, the New Deal era. And and when it breaks, and we get uh, friend of the pod Ronald Reagan uh, <laughs> coming into power in in 1980, and and in, like no, now we're getting into the time like when like I was alive for for this. Now I mean, like I don't remember 1980. I was like a year old, right? But. But this is the era we grew up in. And so this is our normal. You know, the Reagan era is our normal. Uh, and this is uh, what Strauss and Howe refer to. The, th the, the third 20-year period in the turning is called the unraveling. And uh, that's that's appropriate to describe, like, the Reagan, Bush, and even Clinton years, uh, because it's the yeah. systematic dismantling of the uh, the the New Deal order, the uh, the social safety net, the uh, 
the welfare state. Uh, you know, you get Reagan coming in, you know, the, his, his famous, uh, you know, government isn't the solution to our problems, it is the problem. <laughs> um, and, 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 and that kind of became the defining ethos of the following 20 years or so, you know, maybe 20 plus. Um, and, and so you get uh, your your top marginal tax rate taken way down, so it amounts to a huge tax cut for, you know, the, the, the richest people in the country. Um, they start taxing Social Security for the first time. Uh, we spend a shit ton of money on uh, defense. I say defense. I, I gotta... I gotta... Uh, inter interject here with this Please. question. When you say they're taxing Social Security, am I to interpret that as the government is taxing the government, but that that's the sort of the government that the people give the money to? Is that... Yes. Am I, <laughs> how... Yeah. It's like, yeah, hey, how does... we we already... We're, we're holding on to this for you so we can give it back to you later, but... First, we're gonna take some we're tax gonna take cut. money out of that as a tax. Yeah. That makes yeah. absolutely no goddamn sense. Well, yeah, if you're a sane, decent, compassionate person, <laughs> but if it, you're Reagan, it, it, that a makes concept, total sense. Uh, it's a concept that I uh, haven't even like. I don't think I knew at least out of hand that they tax social security because that's like, I don't know, like the defense department taxing like, uh, the, the federal trades commission. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, what do you mean? How can you tax that? What, what is this? Like, it's like, it's like me walking over to my neighbor's house and being like, you need to pay for my electric bill. <laughs> Neighbor, like, look, you've been gone on vacation, and I'm a nice neighbor, and you asked me to check your mail for you, and I did. Here's all your mail, but um, this check that you got about a week ago, I'm gonna hang on to that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wild. It's a wild concept. Anyway, continue. I just yeah, had so to that's clarify the thing that because I'm like, like, wait a minute. Forty years. Yeah, no, but but that, that 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 that's your next twenty years, and 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 we, our generation, I don't think appreciate how far right Reagan was. Uh, you know, yeah. he was our he was our like you know doddering old grandfather who like for, forgot he had a pocket full of Werther's original. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's like, I've had to get into it with people. I'm like, Reagan was a bad guy. And they're like, how was he a bad guy? I'm like, well, and I was coming at it for more of the social policies type of thing, not the economic policies, the economic policies. I'm going to tell you, those don't sound good either. Well, they're all the same. I mean, really, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, we, and I, I, I don't know if this is a distinctly American problem or not, but God damn, we hate some taxes in this country. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong. You wouldn't like, think nobody so. Nobody wants to, like, <laughs> pay taxes and, you know, get crap for it, which is kind of what we're getting. But, like, the, the idea of taxes isn't bad, right? Like, this is the original crowdfunding. This is how we, like, pool our resources together to, like, get stuff that all of us need, but we can't do on our own yeah um um it would you say that maybe the way that taxes have sort of changed in this last uh little cycle here could be maybe uh influenced by capitalism and <laughs> people looking at the government like it's some sort of uh business which it's not it's not how not really how the government's supposed to work i understand there's some economic things involved but that's not you're not trying to maximize profits by being like hey can we tax everything what kind of microtransactions on uh on the interstate highway can we get into you know what i mean 
Oh, well, it, no, it's 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 funny you bring this up, and, and it's another thing I'll dive into in another episode. It's like, you know, there's always an easy way to do things. Like, hey, we, you know, if we take this direct path right here that goes through socialism land, we could get the, the, the desired public outcomes we would like. Um, yeah. Can, we, but go, we, can also... we go that way? No, 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 we don't go that way. Because, because it's not because it's not profitable and we already hung our entire hat on trying to make the russians the bad guys via communism so yeah. we are, and, it turn, and we tried to make the russians the bad guys via communism and it turns out the russians are the bad guys via fascism but <laughs> yeah we'll yeah. get there <laughs> um <laughs> Um, so we have this unraveling, you know, like, Reagan's terrible, Bush is terrible, they're, they're criminals and they got away with it, and Iran-Contra was an impeachable offense, yada yada yada, don't get me started on Reagan. But the problem is really that Democrats were like, damn, we just got our asses handed to us for a couple of election cycles in a row. Maybe we should try to do exactly what these other guys are doing. Um, <laughs> and and they did. God damn, if Bill Clinton didn't come in and win in 92 by being a Republican. What? You're saying he didn't win the election by playing the saxophone competently? Well, I mean, look, compared and and and, and, and now I, I I distinctly remember the 92 election cycle. I was in middle school. This was like the first election cycle that I like really remember the personalities. And um, was it was it Clinton versus Bob Dole? Or that is that was, no, a little that was, that was the next cycle. This was Clinton versus the Bush. Next okay. Clinton versus Daddy Bush. And then yeah, you had I, Ross I, Perot I, thrown in there too. And, and, and Ross Perot, sort of, he's like a sneak preview of of what we're going to get as we go forward. Like, like Ross Perot was MAGA before MAGA was a thing. Yeah. Um, so, Bill Clinton comes in, and he's like, this is the end of big government as we know it. And, and it destroys welfare and they <laughs> you know can't get through uh, uh, health care reform and, and Bill Clinton essentially embraces neoliberalism. He embraces Reaganomics. Uh, you know, this, oh, God. this idea that the the market is always right. And through the market, we can, uh, you know, achieve efficiencies that government cannot provide. Yada yeah. yada. Right. Uh, but but yeah. But statistics are statistics. Uh, they're not <laughs> at all a living thing. I I don't. What? I could probably could have said that more eloquently, but. Uh, you know, that's just not how you don't, you can't base that type of thing on something like that alone. You got it, nuance. It lacks nuance is the way is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Nuance is a thing I feel like a lot oh, of yeah. us struggle <laughs> with. Uh, Absolutely. Especially in the modern era, because, uh, you know, media especially is like, uh, you know, black and white, and you know, scream at the top of your yell, yell lungs that you know the, the the biggest, most outrageous headline is what's going to get the clicks and the eyeballs. Yeah, and like, and, um, me, me, have you heard the con the term media literacy mm, thrown mm -hmm. around? I'm gonna I'm gonna take this uh, a little off the road here uh, to kind of get sort of where as an example about how people could misconstrue stuff really bad with their own media literacy because media isn't just about what I'm about to say it's, it's, it's this type of thing, it's the government's politics, it's, it's understanding the world around you. There's a show uh, 
It is called Attack on Titan. And this we're really far off the road from what we're talking about. But th- there is a big... Oh, wait a second. Hub, I think blue. my daughter watches that one. Is that the one with the big, crazy, ah. like, uh, the, 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 the giant people? Right? Yes. Yes. Is that a thing? Okay. Yes. Clearly, clearly a young lady of culture. Um, but... Um, there was this, um, <laughs> big hollabaloo about, uh, like, I don't know, like, two years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit longer ago than that, where everyone's like, it's a, it's pro-Nazi. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, th- there are people who are out there being like, I don't know if I want to watch it, because people are saying it's pro-Nazi, and I'm like, and, and here, and you, you, Scott, you have never seen this show, really, you don't understand why people are saying this. Let me, to, I, let me ask I've you this question. I think I've seen 20 seconds of it, yeah. You, one, you're doing yourself a disservice. Two, uh, let me get back to the. <laughs> um, it. Let me let me ask you this question. You have you seen the movie Inglorious Bastards? I have. It's been a minute, Would you yes. say that that movie is pro Nazism? <laughs> well, I mean, it certainly does portray Nazis as having existed. Exactly. That's the thing. This show. This show has, has sort of very clear, uh, like. The the disenfranchised people are sort of portrayed as the Jews, right? And the bad guys who they they by I want to I want to say this they're not Nazis they're not literal Nazis but they do follow some patterns that Nazism does but not at all <laughs> they're dissimilar fascist. to yeah exactly well they're 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 not dissimilar from any other massive empire that's ever existed and they're also the bad guys so like what do we not understand about this how can you say that this show is is advocating for that when they're the bad guys if people can't see this and get that and they're like well these guys sure do seem like nazis and we do get perspectives from these characters on this side they must be this show must be saying that they're right and it's like what the fuck are you talking about right now and if if that's the type of thing that can people can misconstrue a directed piece of media that's like hey here's the ideas that i'm sort of writing about and here's the bad guys and here's what they stand for and they're like Take away the opposite message? How can people navigate a real-world political system where politicians, all of them spin stuff, and, like, not only that, your understanding of the issues itself, you don't even know to combat it, but yet... (sighs) Yeah. People, People do not... Nuance. People do not want to sort of think for a moment outside themselves and really absorb this stuff. I forget how we got to here, um, but that's the sort of thing I see on a daily basis, so I feel like that's why I got really worked up about it. Uh, no, it's 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 true, because we are in uh, an unusual era. Um, and, and you, know, you know, you can see that, you know what... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this in here. Work with me when okay. we get there. So, uh, we, we we sort of, you know, we left off with Clinton, and then you get into uh, you know, the, the the we're only the Clinton. Uh, I know, but like you get to the 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 you know little little Bush era, and uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like you like that little Bush. I I remember that there was a show, and I feel like its greatest achievement was calling itself Little Bush. Uh, I don't was, remember uh, it being I, I particular. Believe that was uh, a Trey Parker and Matt Stone joint, and it was that's my Bush. <laughs> or wait, no, there was no. It was literally Bush called. Too. What it was, was literally that? called. It was called Little Bush L I L apostrophe Bush, and it was like chibi bush and chibi like i don't know You're like right. whoever Wasn't the hell like his little, like, gallery tiny, was oversized head like condoleezza rice hanging out with him yeah and yeah they were it, like it was look. it was not i don't remember it being funny but maybe that's because i was too young to think it was funny uh, but i mean at that time i was watching the daily show and thinking that was funny so i don't know right uh, well but the, you know then and i don't even know it, it, it had to have been pre-9-11 right 
because... I don't think it was. Mm. What kind of was like, that 9-11 sort of afterglow where, like, where you could not say anything bad about George Bush for, for a couple years there? Um, yeah, I mean, I remember, like, Scott, you're a little bit older than me, so, and I and a little bit of a different person, so I don't know what you were into at the time, but I remember uh, when I was in high school, there was, like, a whole fucking album that was released that said, rock, it was, the name of the album was Rock Against Bush, and it was all of these, like, bands at the time, and it, like, had, like, this cartoon picture of Bush putting his hands over his ear, his little dainty ears, and, like, <laughs> yeah, like, by the time it was 2004, 2000, from 2004 to 2007, whenever the hell that album came out, people were fucking over him. Oh, the after uh, yeah. 9-11 did not For last sure. very long. By the, well, you know, no, you know, he'd be blew his political goodwill, you know, with the Iraq war, which was yeah. completely unjustified. Uh, and then by the time you get to, like, 2008, and you get to the the financial meltdown, and this this ties very neatly into the end of our, uh, the, the third generation of our turning here, the unraveling sort of reaches its crescendo with the 2008 financial crisis. The third turning ends in like 2007. I, I'm gonna say that 2008, when the uh, you know the economy melts down, the stock market crashes, yeah. we got the, that is sort of the end of the unraveling. Um, like basically at that point, the the the, the neoliberal order sort of crashes, and we are now. Yeah. You know, these last 15 years, basically, living in the aftermath of that. Yeah. Um, because as much as uh, a lot of liberals like to look back on the Obama years fondly, and, you know, I'm as guilty as anybody, it's like, hey, that guy was smooth. You know, yeah. well, like a, a per and, and personal classy and like well spoken, and then you know, Trump yeah. happened. It's a, like a per, it, personal it, anecdote, too. If we, we were looking at just the way that society was at the time, when I say society, the, again, this is through my own personal lens. Uh, before Obama, um, was like the president, I was probably at the lowest point, uh, in my life as far as being a productive member of society was. It was hard getting a job. I didn't make enough money to feed myself. Um, like, I, I had, I was like, I was scraping by and like i lived in an apartment that had like a uh, half rent because my grandmother owned that apartment still had to pay rent and like i was like fool boy because i think it was probably before i started working with you and that was like things are not looking good for old tom over here <laughs> <laughs> well things it's like looking i need to eat for a lot of I guess everybody, and that's why sh- like yeah we're like shit god damn things have got really bad maybe we should give the black yeah. guy a chance <laughs> yeah and... so like there was a, a you know I, I don't know how much you can extrapolate it to what was really happening from my point of view it did get uh, better at that point but I don't know if that was me or if that was society for a minute <laughs> uh it, well, yeah I mean certainly I mean for, 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 for me as well I think you know uh, we got in we were in the right place at the right time where we were, you know, sort of like just barely able to buy a house during the Obama era. And, right. and, 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 and like, I, I don't think we could attempt to buy a house now. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm still waiting for that housing market to crash, but, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Like it, 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 it's 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 true, and 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 um, I have to keep in mind, like every day, that we were just sort of we were in the right time at the right place. We were able to then, you know, we we found a good realtor and just like you know the right house was on the market at that time and and we got lucky um 
yeah, even now, just you know, it's we've been in our house for ten years. That the the, the world's completely changed. Yeah, you, you can't uh, I do have, that now. I have a uh, some friends. They're a um, I find that they're a married couple. You you shut your mouth, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I, I have these friends that are like they're a married couple that have been. Um, they it took them like a like a long time to find a house. They were like, and when they started finding stuff in their ranges, it was like a knockdown drag out. They went through like three iterations of different three housing negotiations where like the house would be like bought by somebody else because of how much the people were like the person selling is playing the game until they finally like their fourth shot they they bought the house and it's like that's that's something to see from like you know uh i grew up living in a fucking trailer right so like it's like things have always looked pretty questionable to me economically for like where are you going to be to buy a house and to see people who are kind of a little bit farther along the road and they're doing that and they're struggling is like that's not a good sign (laughs) so what you're saying tom sounds like the american dream is dead yeah (laughs) it does certainly seem that way yeah, I think it's. Well, so, I think there's there's still some level of tenability to it, but you have to be like really willing to hunt for the right balances in your own life to ever get there. And I'm very much particular about that. Like, uh, I think we talked about this last time we had a conversation. My last job I had, I fucking it was the first time I ever walked out of a job. I told them on Friday, like, hey, I quit. <laughs> like I did, I I gave him the courtesy of walking on a Friday. I was making like, I, I, I the job I'm working at now. I took a seven dollar an hour pay cut to come do this job because I hated wow. that job so much. I have to be really careful about what I'm doing to not die. And I say that in a metaphysical sense. I was in a lot of pain at my last job. I my work life balance was a nightmare. And there are people who can totally go with their work life balance and annihilate it like that. And like, cause there's other people doing my job that made more than me because they'd been there longer. And I kind of got it. It's like, yeah, they're, they are kind of killing themselves too, but they're at this place where it's like, this is totally worth it for them. And it's not worth it for me. And I have to kind of redefine, go back, redefine that, find this job, and hopefully it leads to some better prospects where I'll be making more money at some point to be able to buy a house. And I had to get into a more comfortable position, take a $7 an hour pay cut, and exist in that. And only yeah. to find out, only to find out, I'm I'm making like, I don't know, like 10, 10 to $30 less a week at this job than the job I had before, before that other job and inflation's going up. And I'm like, I'm back to like, really like, I'm not, I'm not where I was at five years ago. Kind of like, I need to worry about my money, but I'm still just like, uh, I don't like sliding back like this. It's awfully tight. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, this is not when you... a, uh, uncommon feeling. Uh, yeah, when right your now. means go up and then your means go down, you start to actually start noticing those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that 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 really uh, illustrates the you know the the era we're in now, when we are in the fourth <laughs> generation of the turning. We are in the uh, crisis mode, and and um, this is what we've sort of been in since the uh Obama era and it uh it, it was really I don't think most of us especially in Indiana and and Ohio and other Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and you know the, the other sort of uh industrial Midwest states um do not appreciate how important the 2010 midterm election was oh yeah uh, 
because a, we a were, regular thing. No, it we, we, you know we, everybody's coming off the high of Obama in two thousand eight. Yeah, hope and change. <laughs> Woo! And 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 um, you get that Tea Party backlash, and mm-hmm. um, it was sort of treated like, man, he, the the. The, 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 the normal everyday people are really upset. And, and and it turns out like the whole tea party was a manufactured movement. That was yeah. that was that was Charles Koch. That was Americans for Prosperity and the Cato Institute. You know, all the <laughs> all the billionaire front organizations basically, you know, like paying to have large busloads of, of, of Jagos dressed up like fucking George Washington come into some city and parade around it's, and talk uh, about how they were taxed too much and, and, and you know, the media ate it up. I know that we were talking, I think we talked a little bit about this in the pre-show about uh, sort of informational reach uh, about mm. some things and like that, that to those 2010 middle terms elections definitely were sliding in. Uh, you know, you compare that that year to right now, especially because it's a very vivid living memory. It's like uh, that was something that could go under the radar still is that people were doing that. And now it's like, Hey, there's going to be some guy who's going to fucking tweet out like, Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, this billionaire, whatever, a super PAC is paying me like $10,000 to go out here and act like I'm a regular idiot. And then the whole, the whole shtick gets blown open and people are like, they're fucking doing that. It's, oh, there's it's a whole a definitely- ecosystem built up around it. Like, the, the, yeah. this, this entire like uh, right wing uh, media sphere and your you know like you know Fox obviously like back in our day oh, it was Fox News but now there's like twenty of them you know you got your Fox News yeah. you got your Newsmax you got your OAN then you got like thirty dudes with podcasts all of whom are being sponsored by you know Americans for Prosperity who, or who was Club that for one that died or... recently what's that. Who was that one that died recently and, like, Trump spoke at the funeral? <laughs> oh, the Diamond and Silk, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know which one of... I don't know if it was Diamond or Silk who died, but Trump gave a very, very uh, inappropriate, like, speech at at the wake or just, something. Just totally, total, total Trump, you know, just... just yeah, yeah, do, he, do oh, he's he doing did. it again. Doing he's Trump at stuff. it again. Yeah, it, it well, no, that's just you know part of the the right wing grifto sphere. You know, you gotta gotta take care of your own. Um, so that's I mean that's where we are now. Like you, you, you were talking about you know like some some billionaire super PAC paying me to tweet out this thing. It is we are we are in information warfare. Um, yeah, we we are. And there's definitely like it's it we're in we're in especially in the year. 2023 and like partly in 2022 2022 was really the lead up to this uh they've described it as the year of finding out where like some a lot of these like informational warfare online stuff has fallen apart a lot you know and uh, to kind of extrapolate that you can see that in a sort of like a general sense when you look at people like Elon Musk and Twitter and how mm. that's all fucking falling apart. But like every day people are like getting like, Hey, you know that you haven't like secured your website at all. And like literally any like buddy can just like, it it's like an open source website or something like that. We just look at it anytime. You know how many times that's fucking happened? Not, not just 10 times more than that, where there's like oh, some so sort of many, governmental so website. All these big <laughs> like, hacks. Well, yeah. <laughs> And so much Ooh, of that. The guy, the guy you mentioned earlier, he's from Florida. I can't think of his fucking name off the top of my head. The 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 the, the guy that's been like I don't know, paying prostitutes and paying like underage girls. Maybe maybe they're oh, of Gates. age, but yeah, Matt Gates. Yeah, Matt Gates' entire Forehead debacle. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Gates' entire debacle is more of that information warfare. It's like, dude, you're just on on fucking Cash App, like giving these people money that's like tax like the the irs can see that other people can see that like <laughs> you're just and, and yet, <laughs> when you're a certain amount of powerful or a certain amount of rich you can get you can get away with it yeah, and, yeah to a certain extent i definitely feel like we're slowly 
getting to that point where it's like, hey, like you may be able to skirt jail, but like the pub, the court of public opinion will get you. And not only that, a lot of these people are sort of not playing the game right, where they're not playing the old guard the right way. Well, the old mm. guard are kind of getting sick of Trump and his stuff. You know, it's that like I guarantee you. True. Yeah. This this guy, this fucking guy with like shitting and grin and a giant forehead, who's paying girls for sex on Cash App, is not gonna curry a lot of favor with the sort of more hoity-toity businessmen of the Republican Party. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The Republican Party is absolutely sort of at war with itself right now. And that's one of the things I sort of, you know, skipped over and didn't get into is that you've got this unholy alliance, sort of like the last <laughs> generation of um, sort of like radical property rights supremacist libertarians like your, you know, Koch brothers. Basically, um, through their network of non-profit foundations and front groups and moving money here and moving money there they you know they they've been funding the entire right-wing movement for the last 40 years um and they 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 sort of with with Reagan you know after that period of unrest uh they 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 cracked the, the New Deal consensus and peeled off those old uh you know, the the Dixiecrats, you know, your Strom Thurmans <laughs> and your and your George Wallace and your you, you know, people All names the, I your, I recognize but I do not remember them really what they these did. These are your 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 politicians that essentially represented the poor white block. Uh, uh, of the Democratic Party when they used to have one. And um, then Nixon, starting in 68 with his Southern strategy and and really perfected by Reagan, um, cracked that New Deal Democratic bloc and peeled off those Dixiecrats away from the the, the the Democratic Party and brought them into the mm. uh, Republican fold and so like those people uh, th their kids are the MAGAs yeah yeah um, and tracks. now you've got that rebellion you're speaking of you know that your 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 big government conservatives right those are your Dixiecrats they're like they they want to use big government um like the republican mainstream doesn't but they want to use it for social engineering basically yeah. to, to achieve christian theocracy yeah that's a big and uh, i think that uh the reason that that's a little bit harder to obtain for them now is is because of the information age that we live in that type of social engineering on that way it's like ah i see you're trying to manipulate me here <laughs> it's like it's like it's a, i don't know like there's a lot more um it, it's becoming a real big soup and where the cards lie uh for younger people are where they're gonna fall and they usually don't change uh at all and like all the old dogs don't learn new tricks really like so it, uh, it's yeah, sort no, of it a, turns out, uh, a battle. Apples a battle don't for fall the that youth. far from trees. <laughs> yeah, and like there is a sort of, um, you know, it, that's what it, that's all is what it kind of boils down to. It's it's weird that it, we kind of frame it this way because definitely in a lot of media, it's a very strong youth culture that we have in the United States. But as far as political intrigue goes. Yeah, uh, they don't. They're a little slow to pick up on that, and it's just kind of like what trickles down. And a lot of people still, you know, that they, uh, aside from the social engineering, the the biggest thing they have working for them is people's general ignorance about stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, and um... I have, I have a coworker. Mm. She is twenty one years old, and boy, let me tell you, that's 
so interesting to kind of see at from this uh side of it mm -hmm. um and how like she is pretty different than i am in a lot of ways and it sort of boggles the mind how much she doesn't know about stuff and like I, that, that, this is again purely anecdotal. None of this stuff has ever, ever interested her. And I'll get into conversations where I'm like, "Well, this is happening," and she's like, "What?" <laughs> uh, and like, who? These people like this because that is actually an age where you, I think, you do start finding out. I think I was between eighteen to twenty-one when I like went to college and started really understanding what like, feminism was, understanding how sort of systemic racism can be systemic and what the word systemic means. <laughs> like, it's like, oh shit. And like, but like seeing oh, shit. her, Tom, 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 you, yeah. you, you need, you, you need to go see the doctor. You caught the woke mind virus. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, but like seeing her in this position to where it's like, well, at least she's not stupid because she can hear, she's hearing me. This is the type of these people at this age and a little bit younger, a little bit older. These are like the people that are, like are sort of there at war to try to get these people on their side. And it's very much a big toss up of how that's going to fall. Uh, I work in a very blue collar job right now. And a lot of the people I work with are definitely Trump supporters. And I don't know who it gets a little weird. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, when I say a massive company, it is a very big little company. It's like 500, 600 people. And sure. like you going back to her as my litmus test. She's like, I'm like you, because when I started there, we were coming off fresh off of the whole, like, are they going to ban abortion thing? And she was very much against that. Uh, fast forward. I'm having a conversation about like how, um, Everybody hates cops. And she's like, not everybody hates cops. And I'm like, uh, yeah, they do. What are you fucking talking about? And like, I made her upset because I'm like, no, all cops are bastards. And like, it's like, you clearly have like, there's a, there's a war for your opinion on these things for sure in this way. But like the whole other company are, are her uh, iconography on all of our trucks I don't, I don't want to like you know dox myself here, yeah. but the iconography is um, never forget with an American flag on it. And when I first started working there, I was like, "What don't we forget?" And then I was like, "Is this a nine eleven thing? Are we? Is is a bunch of our branding nine eleven themed? That can't be the case." Yeah, and it was twenty years ago, it's sure, time to freshen up. <laughs> It's also, like, a business, right? I'm like, how is September 11th, a very dark day in American history, part of our branding? It seems really tone deaf in a strange way. And I went, there's a bathroom in one of the main buildings. On that, In that bathroom is a, uh, a painting, I guess, of a bald eagle. And in the bald eagle's eyes are the twin towers on fire and in the other eye is the pentagon on fire and the bald eagle i shit you not is crying oh, and man. this is hanging up in the bathroom and i'm like guys like i think that you know i'm not saying that we should have some reverence for september 11th but like we are really like being weird about this this feels weird and yeah. uh, so it's like, that's the sort of minefield I have to navigate is people who put that up are the people I'm working with. Ah, uh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there's a whole department where like 80 to 90% of them are all gay, are all LGBT people at this company. And it's super uh, weird. How do they all wind up in the it's same super... department? Uh, computer stuff, I guess. I don't know. Uh, my friend, my friend works in that department. My friend works in that department, and he's like, "Yeah, I feel like uh, 
probably about m- the majority of everyone else in my department is is a LGBT of some sort. And I'm like, wild. I mean, and then I walk out of his office into the shop and I'm just like, everyone's like, Durka Durka, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, this is a weird, this is a weird place. This is a weird that place. Is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. You don't see you don't see a lot of logistics companies that have their own theater department. Uh we are not a logistics company. I just work in the logistics <laughs> department. I see. But their logistics is definitely part of the business and a very important part of society. <laughs> uh absolutely no, absolutely true. If we've seen nothing the last uh three years, it is that logistics matter. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of uh, recent news, I just was informed yesterday that the Indiana uh, whatever government is uh, has greenlit uh, traffic cameras, speed cameras to be put up around uh, construction sites. Mm. And I'm like, hmm, oh, I wonder how much of about safety you actually cared about that, or is that just really an automated source of revenue for the state? I, I guess we'll find out once we start seeing the uh, the revenue reports, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> we do a lot of that around here. Um, but we, 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 we've come to a good spot. So we are at a crisis point now. Uh, we are at the end of uh, an 80-year cycle. We are in... The fourth turning. We are we are in a, a, a repeat of the lead up to World War II. Um, there, there are fascists at the door. There are <laughs> fascists in uh, the United States government. The last presidential administration was full of them. Uh, they're still in office in many prominent positions. We've got senators, we got representatives, we got governors. Um and it's 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 nineteen thirty eight all over again. Um yeah. we are we are in the midst of a war I think most of us haven't even appreciated that we are in now. Um you know, we are all being tugged at by information warfare. A lot, a lot of it is being funded with Russian oil money. Um, you know, the, the very... The very freedoms that make us America uh, are sort of being hacked and turned into a weapon against us. Yeah, I believe there's a, a quote uh, that's very res- reminiscent of that. I don't know what, exactly what uh, thing it's from. That the um, like subjugation is freedom, so type of thing. Freedom is slavery. It's a, yeah, freedom is slavery. Like uh, war uh, is peace. That's 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 horrible. That's 1984. Pe- yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun fact about my Indiana curriculum: curriculum that was not required reading. Mm. For me, for for whatever literature class I was in, it uh, it should be. It well, is highly it, appropriate for this moment. I will say this: somebody, some people were reading it in my high school, and I don't know why I specifically didn't read it because I was in AP? literature classes. I did not take AP. AP kids. Were I reading don't it. feel maybe. I feel like that shouldn't be a. <laughs> <laughs> a requirement for the AP it should be required for everybody, but like you know, like oh, absolutely, I, I heard it's people a disservice talking about to the rest they... of us. Yeah, like I, like I, you know, Animal Farm. I never read Animal Farm. I just know what it's about. I know what 1984 is about. Like, but yeah, um, it, it's very yeah. Like I, I get what you're saying. Like our, our sort of we're we're being worked against ourselves. Yes. Uh, yes, we are. It's um, it's 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 not. A, we're we're not getting we're not getting presented with problems to fix. We're getting presented with dilemmas. 
and uh, a dilemma has no real right answer to solve it. Just two, two or more ways that uh, there's some sort of downside to how you do it. And that's the kind of that's the hand we're being dealt is, oh, well, you could do this, or you're going to trade this, or you could do this, or you're going to trade this other thing. Which one do you want to do? You only have these choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly all of our options are not being presented to us. Um, and that that's the well, that's the nature of capitalism. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I do want to bring this plane home here for a landing, um, and I and I think we've done a decent enough job of sort of laying out where we're at now. Um, you know, we it's it's a perilous time, um, and our job, I guess, as people who understand that things are more perilous than. Um, you know, those who make the big decisions would, uh, would let us know. You know, it seems that if everything, mm-hmm. that, that everything's sort of finish, everything's not finish. Um, <gasps> we're, we're, we're in, we're in, we're in for some, uh, troubling times. Some chop. The next couple yeah. years here. So, um, I am going to, as we are well over time here, uh, bring this we thing to a time a close. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, but I'd like to keep it under an hour by the time it's yeah. all edited down. Um, so, yeah. that is going to be it here for our first full episode of Who's Left. Uh, my guest has been <laughs> Tom LeVon. Tom, do you want to tell the good people where they can find you? Oh boy, I sure don't know. Uh, you can find our old uh, stuff uh, on YouTube at Linear Radio. Um, I don't have a personal, like, I don't I don't stream or anything. Uh, pretty much anything I ever used to do as a media person is on that YouTube channel. Uh, you can find a Twitter that I only lurk other Twitters on at linear radio. I'm pretty much the only person in charge of that. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, the, the linear radio crew still exists. We're still around. Uh, if you say something on Twitter, I, you know, somebody will see it if you want to say to somebody else. Uh, yeah, the only other thing I do that's online is I'm a mod at uh, Rissa Havoc's uh, Twitch channel. Um, that's all I really do any any days. Uh, yeah, that's that's where I exist on the internet as a personality anymore. <laughs> those, right. Only well, those places. Let this be a kick in the ass to you to uh, you know start putting up some new content for the people here. Uh, yeah, that's why I call it Schrodinger's YouTube channel. Is like, are we doing something? Are we not doing something? It's been like I don't know a few years since we've done it, but we all still hang out and we never act like it's not a thing. So, at some point, randomly, you may get more linear radio content. Twenty twenty three, America, ladies and gentlemen, we're all sort of still here, but don't know what we're doing. <laughs> And on that note, uh, I have been Scott Aaron Rogers, and this has been Who's Left. Love you, Indiana. Love each other. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.